42 asks, did you do any internships? If so, how did you get your first internship? Yeah, so I got my first internship back in 2017, which was the summer after my freshman year at MIT. At the time, we didn't have to declare a major until our second year. So even though I knew that aerospace engineering was a degree that I wanted to get, I put on my resume that I was an aspiring software engineer. And so I was able to go to the career fair that's hosted here at MIT, talk to Northrop Grumman, which was a large aerospace corporation, and ultimately was able to get an interview, talk about the different high school coding projects that I had done in the past and the past research experiences that I did in an electrical engineering lab at UCLA and ultimately all of the internships that I did and the different side projects that I did along the way got me to where I am today, where I'm working full time as a senior software engineer in a fully remote role. Stick around to the end of the video to find out how I landed this specific remote software engineering job. Hi everyone, I'm KJ, I work full time as a senior software engineer. Today I'll be answering coding related questions in this episode of Life Support. Shreya Dreamer 003 asks, what do you think? Which role in engineering can give the best market and industry exposure? This question is a great one. And it's something that shifts from time to time, depending on what's really hot in the software market. Right now, that's AI. So the position that I think gives you the biggest exposure to many industries is being a machine learning engineer. These are people who deploy and train different models that can do specific tasks. And this can apply to autonomous car companies. This can apply to basically any software company that's out there. And the applications are really endless and everybody's trying to get AI into their workflow. So being a specific machine learning engineer will have you really coveted across the industry. Yuga Patel asks, what experiences does one need to be a software engineer? So typically people study computer science and that's the direct track to a software engineering role. I specifically have an aerospace engineering degree and I still have a software engineering role. And for someone like me, I'd say that you'd have to have a lot of project experience under your belt, uh, have worked in distributed systems, at least have the knowledge of how to set up a software as a service software offering. And from there, you'll need the obvious skills in terms of the three main aspects of a software engineering interview, that's systems design, that's coding, algorithm, and questions, and generally be able to talk about this in a more human way. RG2067 asks, what programming skills do you have before entering the world of software engineering? So this is a great question. My degree was aerospace engineering, but because I was in the autonomous systems track of aerospace engineering, I had a good amount of coding experience. I had route planning, algorithmic classes. I've had real-time systems classes where I've had to code for a robotic arm or autonomous car or a virtual environment that reacted to real world scenarios. So I had a lot of straight up algorithmic skills under my belt, but I didn't have at the time that much experience in cloud distributed systems, remote servers, APIs, things like that. And so to gain that type of knowledge, I worked on a lot of different side projects myself, like a auto trading bot or fantasy basketball analyzer, different things that I enjoy that I can work on and learn more about how software systems are put into place. Pradi Unsharma asks, key software skills for a career in robotics with a mechanical engineering background. So I think you're asking what software engineering skills you need to work in robotics fields with a mechanical engineering degree. So I think first you'll need to get really honed in on algorithms. So you can get honed in on algorithms with things like leap code, for example, just run through different algorithms, see which ones are most efficient, because when you're working in robotics, you need the most real time computation. So efficiency is really key. And I think beyond algorithms, it's also beneficial to see how code actually interacts with physical systems. So the sooner you can get your hands on any sort of project that interfaces software with hardware, the better off you'll be. Not Nitsuj asks, what exactly are you doing in the software engineering side? So my current day-to-day -day job is a senior software engineer in the client solutions organization of my company. So basically I'm the first line of defense. Whenever a bug arises and a client notices and flags our company, it comes to us. And as a client solutions engineer, I look at that, see if it's anything that we can solve immediately if 
I can, I do it. If not, I pass it on to our DevOps team or our core product team, and they can figure that out from there. Another responsibility that we have is actually spinning up our software solution for new clients. And this, a lot of the time, involves custom features that they want, and we work with the client to spin up a solution that works for them. Jorge asks, how relevant is knowledge of low-level systems, OS concepts in real life? I think this is a great question. I feel like in CS curriculums, you can go a long way and do very well without fully understanding how everything works on a system level. I think the level of knowledge that you need within a system depends on the role that you're trying to get within software engineering. If you're an infrastructure or DevOps engineer, then you have to really understand the system intricacies because you're going to try and make it as efficient as possible for the whole company to run their code off of. If you're just a normal backend engineer that doesn't have to work on the infrastructure DevOps side of things, then your knowledge of the system can be a little bit more basic. But the more you know about how different environments affect code or where the code is living or how you're even spinning up local instances of it, the better you're going to be in the long run and the more you'll be able to understand and problem solve in the future. Korede Oyefusi asks, why did you focus more on software engineering in your current life? did you learn by yourself? So in my aerospace engineering curriculum, a lot of what I gravitated to were classes that involved coding. So the real-time systems classes for the autonomous robotic arm or the autonomous car or the projects that I worked on like an autonomous drone really just resonated with me. I love coding in general and seeing it work in a physical system was really fulfilling to me. I think what I didn't know right off the bat was how fulfilling it would be for code to also run. It's not a physical system, but I can make code that does really cool things. So to get into the world of software engineering, I had to really make sure to round out my output algorithmic knowledge with knowledge of actual systems, how they worked, distributed servers, cloud servers, and everything in between there. Adrian asked, how can I learn programming in my home being a high school student? Programming is so readily available now that really the thing that's going to get you learning the fastest is to start a project. Figure out something that you really want to do. It could be as simple or as complicated as you want, and then figure out from there what systems you'll need to put that together. And however long it takes, you're going to be learning things along the way. Then you'll learn how to utilize tools like Stack Overflow or even ChatGPT, and you'll start to understand how these coding systems are put into place and what algorithms you'll even need to do the things that you want to do. Daniel Jackson asks, favorite programming language? So this actually changed from time to time for me. I used to be a C++ person because I loved working in real-time systems and that's what I was more familiar with. But now Python seems to be a lot more widespread and a lot of different code bases are running in Python. Python's getting a lot more efficient. And yeah, I think I'm a Python person now. If that's, I don't know if that's controversial, but I like Python. It's simple, it's easy to read, and it's something that's getting to apply to a lot more things on a day-to-day -day basis. Sohail Patel 15 asks, what programming language and frameworks do you use the most? So the language that I use the most on a day-to-day -day basis is Python. A lot of the backend code is Python, and there is some front-end code that we may have to interface from time to time that's in JavaScript running in the React framework. So that's basically the world that we live in, in my company specifically. Marco asks, what do you do when you forget how to use a programming language? I think five years ago, Stack Overflow was really the place where every computer scientist went to figure out you know, what's going wrong with their code or how to fix anything. I was a running joke at the time that software engineers are just people who know how to navigate Stack Overflow well, and I won't even object to that because that has a lot of truth to it. These days I actually don't stack overflow too much because one, I'm fixing a lot of bugs of code that's already put in place. And two, now we have tools like ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot that make a lot of these, you know, syntax errors less prevalent. I feel like those are the things that we'd have to look at stack overflow a lot before. But with like a GitHub Copilot, the code is just auto-generated in the right syntax of the language that you're using, which has made me use stack overflow a lot 
list. Pilot Brandon asks, out of all the possible routes to take to learn, which have you seen have the best outcomes? By far, what I recommend the most when learning anything is to sit down, figure out a project around that thing, and then just do it. So for coding specifically, figure out what interests you. Could be anything. Figure out how to apply that to a coding project, and then just implement it. There will be a lot of things that you don't know along the way, but that's when you can look up different forums, different re resources like YouTube, and just piece together your project. At the end of the day, that's how I think someone will learn the fastest. Hey man, Johan asks, how did you obtain logic building skills? A lot of the skills that I gained along the way came from repetition and projects and just seeing different issues at one point or another. I think that's basically why, you know, certain senior positions require certain years of experiences because you just have been there, seen that for a lot of issues that came up that would take a lot of time for someone else to figure out. But you're like, oh no, I remember seeing that issue because this and that happened and you're able to solve things a lot quicker. So I think for me, obtaining logic building skills, it just comes naturally in my day to day and being exposed to a bunch of different types of code on a day-to-day basis. Yora Nerzada asks, do I really need masters in software engineering to land a top job? No, I don't know why you even thought this to be a question to ask because I think in my head, it's fairly obvious, but it may not be. I currently have only an aerospace bachelor's degree and I'm a senior software engineer in the company that I'm at right now. So I don't think you need even a bachelor's in computer science. Although a bachelor's in computer science does make a more direct path that you don't have to justify yourself as much as you know how to code. There are plenty of very successful people that I I even personally know that don't even have a bachelor's degree because they were able to show their coding prowess in an interview setting and be able to succeed from there. Yes, I think a master's in software engineering may make it easier to obtain a coding job, but I don't think it's necessary at all unless you want to specialize further into a specific area of code. Abdi Shakur Mo asks, how did you get a remote job? Is getting a SWE remote job more challenging than an office? So I was fortunate enough to apply to a company that was remote first here in Boston. I think I was open to both hybrid and remote work, but I'm very happy with this current position that I'm in. And I get to work from home with a nice setup here. I feel really productive and I'm able to get a lot of work done here. I will say that it's fundamentally harder to get a fully remote position in software engineering now, even as opposed to a year or two ago because I think we're shifting pretty far in the other direction in terms of we want it to be fully in office and then we shifted all the way to fully remote. And then now people are missing that sort of everyday interaction and then they want to make it some sort of hybrid work opportunity. So a lot of what I see now are more hybrid roles and it has been more rare to see fully remote options from what I've seen in the current job market. So I think it's more challenging to get a fully remote software engineering role just because they're starting to become more rare as every year goes by.